how many peaks here. One thing that might be helpful is add, labeling where all the hydrogens are. Four. Sounds good. Okay, good, except there's no hydrogens here. Uh, right, because this is quaternary. But there are hydrogens here. Uh, so here's one set of hydrogens. There's three hydrogens on this methyl group. And these hydrogens are equivalent to these over here. Mm -hmm. They have the same connectivity. There's no hydrogens at all with this carbon. But there's hydrogens in these two places, and they're equivalent to each other. And there's hydrogens in these two places, and then there's hydrogens here. All right, um, to save time, I haven't drawn the hydrogens. But actually, for a beginner, maybe we should have drawn the hydrogens on every single place. So maybe we shouldn't use too much bottom line notation here. Maybe it's better to actually write down each of the hydrogens. Uh, that way, you don't have to guess who has hydrogens and who doesn't. So I think we did end up with four different sets of hydrogens. Okay. All right, how many peaks here? These two are equivalent. Good. And how many peaks here? Because now we've lost the symmetry. Now that we've lost the symmetry, these three groups are not equivalent to each other anymore. All right, this is a very important skill. Uh, but I guess for time reasons, we won't go through any more examples. But this is one of the things you have to practice, being able to count. Uh, you have to be able to quickly see whether protons are equivalent or not. One thing we can see here is notice symmetry reduces the number of peaks. Symmetry reduces the number of peaks. Remember that the way you're really going to be using this is you're going to be staring at a printout of peaks and trying to figure out what the molecule was that generated it. You're going to be staring at a printout of peaks and trying to figure out what type of molecule generated it. Well, if you notice that there seem to be very few peaks, there seem to be very few peaks, the molecule probably has a lot of symmetry. And that's why there's so few peaks. This is one of the types of clues that we use. Because when you do these, you're, on, you're generally always going to know the number of atoms. When you do these problems, you're generally going to know the number of atoms, because we have good techniques for just counting how many atoms there are in a molecule. So for example, if you see that a molecule, say, if you know that a molecule, say, has um, six carbons, but you're only seeing two peaks or three peaks, you say, gee, it must have a, a, a lot of symmetry in that compound over there. Oh, so, so you know how many, they tell you how many carbons there are? You will know the number of atoms. You'll know the number of carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, whatever. Uh, we have good tech, that's called, I believe, elemental analysis. You'll know the number of hydrogens? You'll know the number. That's oh, right, you know so the total you, number. You, you just have to figure out where they structure? are. That's right. Oh. Um, well, that's what, that's what you would normally do in a real lab. That, I guess they could make a, a kind of a fake test question where you didn't know that. But usually, if it's a realistic question, um, like you would see in the lab, you will know the molecular formula. You will know the molecular formula because we have very good techniques for figuring out molecular formulas. I believe that's called elemental analysis. Um, so it's not very hard uh, in the lab to figure out what the elements are and how, uh, what the ratios are of the elements. So all we have to do is figure out how they're connected. The whole point of the NMR is to figure out how they're connected. Well, again, then, if you already know that there's, say, six or seven carbons, but your printout only has two or three peaks, then you know that the structure must have a lot of symmetry. On the other hand, if you, have, uh, um, if you have a lot of different peaks, then probably there isn't very much symmetry. So this is one of the important clues for working out the structure. For example, how many peaks would this give us? One. But you would know that the elemental formula was C5H12. So you'd have to say to yourself, gee, how the heck can I have 12 hydrogens and only one peak? There must be a lot of symmetry. 
and then you'd have to come up with the formula that has the most symmetry possible, and that would lead you to this. I think this is the only way you can possibly have uh, five carbons and 12 hydrogens and only have one peak, because this is the most symmetrical you could get. Okay, so, um, so now we'll move on to the next type of clue, but that's one of the important skills that you have to practice uh, predicting the number of peaks.